Hello and welcome to the show. Today we're going to be enjoying this uh, Cafe Feminino coffee. I have from them a Peru and a Mexican coffee. Now, Cafe Feminino uh, is a program that I featured in the latest issue of Extracted Magazine. I'll link to that issue below so you can check it out. Uh, but Cafe Feminino works to empower women in coffee, especially women farmers. There are many challenges presented to women in coffee, especially those who work and live in producing countries. It's rarely the case that uh, women ever get recognized for their work, uh, much less actually own the land that they're farming uh, or can lay claim to that production or anything like that. Uh, I've written all about it in the latest issue, so I don't want to dive too much into it in this video. Again, I'll link to that below. Uh, but today I wanted to share with you some of their coffee. So Cafe Feminino is a program that's been around for uh, about 15 years now actually. Uh, and just recently they expanded their program to actually provide their own roasted coffee. So the way they worked before is they would, they've been working in uh, production regions empowering women producing coffee. In order to, to be in this program uh, as a coffee grower, you have to be a woman who owns a coffee farm. So uh, they are providing agency to women who own farms and also providing incentive for local communities to empower their own women to own their farms to produce coffee. So all the coffee that they sell, uh, originally they, they worked as this as an agency to to facilitate that and as an importer uh, and they would connect coffee roasters with the coffee uh, they started to actually directly sell uh, roast and sell the coffee themselves as well uh, so you can of course find roasters who are selling cafe feminino coffee but you can also buy it yourself online now which is really great uh, cafe feminino coffee.com i'll link to it below uh, but so we're going to be trying some of the coffee here like i said i got this peru uh, this is from the Women Farmers of Kekanor Co-op in Lambayeque, Peru. Uh, and also, I have uh, from Mexico, uh, from the Women Farmers of Kesmac Co-op. Sesmac? Kesmac? I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. From Chiapas, Mexico. Uh, and this coffee, actually, we're going to do this one first. So I've been using this coffee in the espresso machine. Uh, it's been quite lovely. These are both medium roasted coffees. I believe the Mexico coffee has been coming out a little bit darker and the Peru has some nice like cherry components to it, but we're going to explore all that. There's actually no tasting notes on the bags, so I'm just going to go by what I can see and enjoy in the coffee. Uh, these coffees are roasted to order, so if you ro uh, buy the coffee online, uh, they will then roast it and ship it to you. So you're getting like really fresh coffee. Um, and pretty much directly from the, from the source, directly from women farmers in these various regions around the world. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I've got, I've got the two coffees here I want to taste. I'm actually going to brew the Peru on the Kalita Wave. Uh, and then while that's cooling off, while that's sitting and cooling off, I'm going to make an Americano and enjoy that as well. So uh, I'm going to brew up the Peru and make an Americano and come back and then enjoy the Mexico coffee. So I'll be making an Americano with this Mexico Chiapas. And then after enjoying that, I will have the Peru from the Kalita Wave and tell you what that's all, I'll tell you what that's all like. So let me get to brewing and then I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So I've brewed up this Peru on the Kalita Wave and we're gonna let that cool a little bit uh, and I've also made a lovely Americano with this Mexico Chiapas. Uh, I'll link to both of these coffees separately. Again, you can buy them directly on the website, but I'm going to go ahead and dive in here. I'm not doing my usual coffee bean slash ground smell with this one. I've actually have it all like in <laughs> the espresso machine right now, so... Mm. Oh, that's quite lovely. Interesting. It's my first impression of this is like a hot cocoa. Uh, and likely a lot of that is, um, you might be able to see here. So I, I actually, I actually did this 
if we want to be technically correct about the terms for drinks, this is more like a long black. The distinction between those is silly. Uh, my understanding of this is that a long black, you take hot water and then you pour espresso into it versus an Americano where you take an espresso and you pour hot water into it. It's technically ultimately the same result, except when you put the espresso into the water, like in that order, you end up with more crema on top, in my experience. Okay, now we're through the crema a bit, nuttiness, cocoa. There's a lot of cocoa. Uh, this is a medium roast, so I can taste the, um, like the roastiness a little bit, but it's actually quite pleasant on this. Um, there's no, there's no like carbon or char or anything like that. It does have a little more of that roasty bitterness, or at least bitterness that I think is the result of the roasting process. But it's pretty, this is a, it's a nice simple coffee. I'm thinking as it cools, cause it's, uh, it's drinkable, but it's still quite warm. And the cacao is like really strong, like cocoa nibs is what, is what that experience is like. I think as it cools, I might get some cherry out of that. But let me set that aside for a moment. Let's take a look at the Peru. So this one, I've actually, I've been enjoying both of these extensively, uh, hence why there's no coffee beans left. <laughs> they're, the rest are in the espresso machine and they're almost gone. Uh, that has been quite nice as an espresso. I did also, I did brew it once on the Kalita Wave. I honestly can't exactly remember the details on that. Uh, I remember doing it on the Kalita Wave and then putting it in the espresso machine and enjoying it uh, in this manner more. Um, just personal preference. Uh, the Peru has been really lovely on the Kalita and the Chemex actually. I don't have the Chemex here, but I did brew up uh, a Chemex of this coffee yesterday and it was really quite nice. A lot of chocolate, but in a different way than this one. Whereas this one's like cocoa nibs, that was more like, more like a dark, dark chocolate bar. A uh, little more sugary sweetness. And then as it cooled, there was some like cherry element to it for sure. All right. But I have, I have the, uh, the coffee beans for this stored in a bit of a container here, the Airscape. All right. All right. So what do I get here? Um, vanilla. There's like, there's like a, yeah, there's a, smells like vanilla. Like, um, like the liquid vanilla that you, that you add to baking, it has that kind of smell to it. There's a subtle sugary sweetness. I'm not sure I'd say there's chocolate on here. It's actually quite, um, hmm. there's some, there's some fruit in here as well. For a moment, I wanted to say plantains, uh, but it's more of a, I think it's more of a berry fruit, but it's, it's not overt. Uh, the way that comes across this like, wow, it's really uh, lovely and complex. The aroma of this coffee, honestly, it's hard to, it's hard to like sit here and put names to all the smells. I can just, as I, as I smell the coffee, I can feel my mind like kind of dancing amongst the different aromas, um, in a pretty intriguing way. Sugary sweetness, a little bit of fruit. There's no nuttiness, a bit of vanilla. I'm actually looking for chocolate because I know I've tasted that on the brew. So um, I like, I want to find it in here, but I don't see it in the aroma. All right, how about we go ahead and dive into the brew since I brewed this up on the Kalita wave. Um, the Kalita should bring out as much of the rich sweetness as we can with this kind of brewing method. Golly, what is that? It's almost like, it's almost a melon, but it's richer. Um, now you know what, I wanna say it's like a, it's like a fluffy sweet bread, but not really like bread, more like fruit and almost meaty in a quality. Hmm. Interesting. All right, I'm not sure this is cooled off enough, but we're gonna try it anyways. Yeah, there's the, the dark chocolate in the, in the taste of it. So naturally, just from a 
experience of the drink perspective, these two are going to be vastly different because as an espresso, even though it's in water, as an espresso, there's a lot of oils like concentrated in here, whereas the paper filter in this would have taken them more out. So this is a crisper brew just on a baseline. But this makes a really nice balanced brewed coffee. I do get some of the roastiness, roastiness from from the uh, from the roasting process again, uh, just like similar to the Mexico roastiness. Uh, it's not there's no char. It's a pleasant it's a pleasant roastiness. If you like a more of a of a roasted coffee, if you like that kind of flavor, that kind of like bitterness level that comes from the roasting process, then this is definitely the kind of coffee you'd really enjoy. I can sense the sweetness on here, but it's a little subtle. Uh, like this is, as, as far as like dark chocolates go, it's more on the darker side. I feel, again, I feel like there's some, there's, there's a juiciness to it. I think that's what it is. So I feel like there's a berry, a sense of berry or, or some kind of fruit in here, but it's really hard to pinpoint taste wise. And I think it's just coming across as juicy, really nice. Uh, okay. So I think I can ramble on a bit more about those. Maybe I'll jump back into this once more really quick. This is cooled off. Um, of course, I've been tasting that, but mm. oh, that's interesting. Maybe it's because I'm drinking this, but now this is more like milk chocolate than cocoa nibs. I think also like the stark difference in the fact that, yeah, and this is espresso, lots of oil, so it's thicker. Uh, and I think it can, it can get that kind of like milk-like quality to it without having any milk in it. I definitely get a bit of cherry, cherry fruit on here just a little bit. You know, I'm wondering about this because I said in the aroma there was vanilla, so I just want to take, just want to take one more stab at this guy, see what I can uncover here. Vanilla, I feel, is a really hard taste to discern in coffee. It's quite delicate. Oh man, the juiciness of this. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I might be able to, I might be able to see vanilla if I really dig at it, but it's a hard one. Hmm. Quite lovely. Uh, dark chocolate, cherry juice. Good level of sweetness, a little bit of roastiness, very nice. All right, I'll link to these coffees below, uh, cafefemininocoffee.com. So I'll link to these below, as well as the issue where I talk all about the program that they are doing, the Cafe Feminino program, so you can read all about that. If you have any questions about these coffees, uh, what I'm doing here, anything like that, please leave your comments below. Always happy to talk coffee. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.